so this is the Modern. We did a playing demo on it and an unboxing. Um, haven't talked about it, but here we are. So there's kind of a lot to unpack here. Um, obviously, if you've never seen any, any of these, it's just it's just so strange, and there's no start. You're just like, man, that is the fakest, most Chinese-looking guitar ever. That says Gibson for some reason. But no, this is American-made, Gibson patented. It's it's a Gibson. Um, but what is it, and where did it come from? There's some controversy to it. So this is the Gibson Modern. Uh, yeah, that's how you say it, the Modern. Um, not the Modern, the Modern. Um, and you need a little bit of history to understand it. So way back in 57, uh, you know, Fender had just produced the Strat in 55, and their tellies were doing good and they were eating into Gibson's market share. So late 57, um, Gibson applied three patents to the United States Patent Office for uh, new guitar shapes to be futuristic and uh, just to kind of be out there to do something new that would kind of spice up their uh, production line. So, um, they forwarded the Flying V and the Explorer, some call it the Futura, but the Explorer, Futura, whatever, they're two different things, it's a long story. And then the Modern. Uh, the V was um, viewed and it was received very well. Uh, the Explorer was also received very well. Uh, Modern was a bit different because it's really, really like hideous. Uh, no one liked it, it was really poorly received, so, um, but there we kind of get to the controversy because a lot of people say that uh, in 58, when they were shown off at the uh, Winter NAMM show, uh, the Modern wasn't even there, and it was just the Flying V and the Explorer. Um, there's a lot of conflicting stories, um, I don't know why even, I mean, some reps from Fender even said even said that there were moderns in 58 at the NAMM show. So it's kind of hard to say just because no one has ever seen or th there's there's no 58 modern out there. So we don't really know if it exists because there isn't one out there. It may have existed at one point. They may have all been destroyed, but um, I don't know. Uh, Billy Gibbons, ZZ Top claims to have one. And uh, it's been photographed, but uh, and I've looked at the photos, and there's like two of them, and both times he's standing like this, and there's no headstock, so you just don't know what it is. Uh, but yeah, so that was back in '58. Fast forward about 30 years later to 1982 and 1983, when Gibson started doing the Heritage series. Um, of the V, the Explorer, and the Modern. That's when they went back to, because, uh, you know, uh, 60s and 70s, the V kind of got that, um, the pick guard and the, uh, you know, four control, or, um, they were changed. Uh, they've been modified over the years, uh, but in 52, or um, 82, 83, they went back to making the Karina versions of those guitars for two years. And with that, they made the Modern. Now we get to this guitar. So obviously this isn't in, in a uh, natural Karina finish. It's in Alpine White. Um, white, it's kind of got that, it's almost turning piss stained. It'll, it'll be there soon, but not quite yet. So this is an 83. And then fast forward even longer, another yeah, I guess another 30 years to 2012, and they did it again. They made the Modern, had a different headstock, it was kind of like a, a V, almost like a Dean headstock, but kind of wonky. It wasn't this really big Gumby headstock, as people have called it. Um, where's the back? But yeah, so there's some history about the Modern. Uh, 
Billy Gibbons apparently has one, but I don't think he does. Um, James Hetfield played a uh, 2012 Modern for like a show or a couple shows. That's really it. I can't think of anyone off the top of my head, even after research that has even played one of these on stage. So yeah. So <clears throat> why do you prefer that color or why'd you get that color or not? Natural. It's because it's probably more rare, and I just thought that was cool. It's just like, you may have a, an 83 Modern, but do you have an 83 Modern in this color? Nah, you don't. So I got this color. And I mean, it, it actually is just nice, like the black, gold, white, Range Road sort of thing. It is a very nice looking guitar. Other than, well, debatably, other than the body, which was kind of the main gripe people had you got like it's like a it's like a V and like a tiny bit of Explorer and like I don't, I don't know like I mean it's just it's strange how they came up with this but yeah I don't, I don't really know how to describe it but no I got this color just because it's nice I got the gold hardware it's sick so when you play it, how do you play like a V or like a? Yeah, regular? I played it like this. I mean, you can play it like this, but then there's like this really big bow. Oh yeah. It's kind of like oh, there's no like a, on the yeah. flying feet. There's no little rubber thing to. Yeah, no. So hold you it. can play it like this. It's really difficult, but I mean, this is the way to play. Yeah, it sits there. It's actually it sits pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Got a lot of room for your leg. Which is kind of a cool design if you think about it, because you got like this hooks onto your leg, and then this, your leg can go like here or all the way up here. That's so kind of the best guitar shape on the planet. Mm -hmm. if you think about it. No, <laughs> but um, but yeah. So, what do you think about this guitar? I like it. Like uh, like when I first went up to you and said, "Yeah, I want this guitar." Like, what? what what did you think? Were you just like, man, are you serious? I thought that's three Gibson Les Paul standards. <laughs> you know, instead of that one modern. But then when we saw it, like in real life, and they opened the case, it was like, that is something else. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Like, I mean, you can get a, a you go tomorrow and get three Gibson Les Paul standards delivered to your house. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Almost any year you want. Well, not any year, but. Yeah. You know, from 95 up, you can just pick one and have it ship to your house. Mm -hmm. If you're one of those things, it's kind of hard to do. Yeah. That's the thing, it's just like, cool, you got a Les Paul, but then when you show people this, they'll just be speechless. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. And I can't even kind of make a sentence. Like, it's just so bizarre. Especially, it looks like the good frets, eh? For early 80s, those are decent sized frets. Yeah, the frets are, I looked at them and they seemed really, really flat, almost like they weren't even there. So it just plays so, I don't know if you can, if you can see how flat that is. Kind of. It's just like a pancake. So it's just like one of the fastest guitars in the West. One of the fastest guitars I have. Super duper slick. But yeah, and it's got the Tim Shaw PAFs, which uh, are pretty getting pretty valuable. Um, not as valuable as the you know fifties Les Paul um, like that. But uh, but yeah, these sound really good. They have tons of clarity. Um, oh, the we point at the pickup. Oh yeah, the uh, ion pickup. <coughs> Yeah, like that's a really old, that's older than this guitar that pickup. But uh, these sounds.
so, that's good. Yeah, so they're not that hot, which kind of means that it's not going to get distorted. It's not going to be like a really fuzzy, almost DiMarzio kind of sound. So they're the cooler pickups, um, but they're just so. I don't know if it's the age or if it was just better back then or what, but they just have, they're really resonant. They sound really alive, kind of. Yeah, yeah, I notice every string gets picked out really well. It's a good yeah. definition between, you know, it, between the notes. And also that's on high gain. Like, um, you had it. I have, you know, seven all, gain. Yeah, so that's where the, the milder pickups come in. So you can play at high gain and not totally go over the top yeah. and just blur everything. It's just a little subtle things that's missing. Yeah, yeah, like no matter how hard. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. some pickups that won't pick up like the D string or something. This won't be heard. It's like what's going on? Yeah, those are all good. Like the slightest touch, they just pick up everything. Yeah. So that's really good. Yeah, good stuff. Um, <clears throat> sounds great. Plays, but it, it has all the Gibson specs. So if you play Les Paul. This will be, other than this, familiar territory, uh, 25 and 3 quarter inch. That would be Gibson scale, so. Yeah, 24. 4 and 3 quarter, yeah. 24 and 3 quarter yeah. scale. Um, ABR 1 bridge, uh, Tim Shell PAFs, you got um, the bell knobs. So the pointer, say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like the black knobs, like uh, not, not too much gold. Yeah, yeah. It's not like... And the pickup finish is still really good. Yeah, those, yeah they're super clean. Yeah, like... Yeah. You, you could probably buff that out a bit more, get that much more shiny. Like. Yeah. This guitar in general is just... Um, <coughs> Pretty minty. It, it's very, very well preserved. It's got a couple blends, but I mean... Yeah, it's got like very small mix up here. Or so in. small you can't even see them on camera and yeah, it's on um, just some stuff in the neck again it's oh, like yeah. miniature pellets or like there 
there and up here, but can can't you, even feel can, them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Some finishing cracks. Other than that, this is an amazingly well preserved. Yeah. Color. It's just. Just what you want at least aged but not wrecked. Yeah. 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 It's. Yeah, it's visibly old, but it's still gorgeous. Because um, uh, you'll find that if you buy something like this, other than a Les Paul, that it'll be way better preserved because people will understand that something like this is a piece of history and it's something rare and it's something that you don't see. Some people, like, I, you know, some people don't even know this guitar exists and they've been playing for years. Yeah. So. Yeah, like Brian had never seen one. He's played yeah, professionally yeah. for decades. Yeah, a buddy of ours is, is like the, mm. the gear wizard, and he had never even heard of one of these until I brought it up. So. Yeah, first time seen in real life, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, um, when we were at the Guitar Center and we opened the case, we saw some pictures don't even come close to doing this thing justice. Seeing it in person is just like, what the hell? It's just... Yeah so different from any other guitar 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 on this wall yeah it's kind of classy but it's out there and it's kind of bubbly but it's still it's still mean i don't know it's yeah it's got some weird i don't know and the it's headstock's weird. just like headstock it, is it, um, that just yeah it's like a custom shot like you never, it makes no sense. Yeah. It's only made that way to be. Yeah. Because they can, you know. Some weird amalgamation. Yeah. Whereas everything else is just like, you know, straight pull, it fits, do it. Yeah. But that thing is just like, what the heck? Well, I guess some Deans and stuff are yeah. out there. Dean but Dean is kind of like, yeah. the only thing I can think of that's kind of strange. Yeah. Oh, no, BC Ridge, like I guess. But this is like yeah, they're not as intricate as that. Okay, what the hell? Yeah, it's like yeah, has a massive brain. Look at the Gibson logo; it's huge. And it's Look at that. it's not a decal or anything. Yeah, it's actually it's coming off a little bit. There, we gotta get some glue and yeah, that's probably the best way to fix that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that, this was actually like what the hell? That's so weird. Yeah, it's not pressed in there. It's like a plastic piece. But yeah, so um... So what's your plan? Your guitar's worth three times as much as your car. What's your plan on life with this guitar, dude? Uh, play it? If you're 19, how long are you gonna keep it for? Forever, this guitar is never leaving me. I wouldn't even, <laughs> no. You'll eat like... soup for three days instead of selling it? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I would, yeah, no. Mm -mm. It's like, the, this guitar, well, there's a backstory here, and trust me, there is. I can't share, but there's a backstory here, so I can never sell this guitar. It's just too, like, kind of. It's like the only guitar I have that I feel like my life led up to buying an instrument like this, where it's just like, this is not nothing will be better than this. You know, every guitar from here on out is just going to be a cool, nifty thing, or doesn't even matter what it is. Even like, you know. 1950 broadcaster if I somehow got my hands on that wouldn't matter this thing that thing would like sit in this thing shadow So mm, yeah, it's just yeah. Yeah, it's the thing it's just something that you like I mean Yeah, I tried out really hard to get you to not buy that guitar. Yeah, yeah. but you're just fixed on it. So Now that's it then there's, that's kind of how you decide really yeah I mean, your specs and there's this shit and that, what it costs and all that stuff, but if it's something you just like, yeah, then that's it's it. Just, it's something so interesting that you can't, you know, you can't just, you know, have, you can't watch some video and be like, hey, there's this insane mythical guitar that may or may not have existed back in the 50s that Gibson made for two years in the 80s. And I can't ignore that. It's just like, that's just so interesting. It's so... Like, it's so unreal, it's just, in the guitar world, there's not a lot of, pretty much this is the only white whale Bigfoot of the guitar world. Like, yeah, that's yeah, good, it's yeah. It's like a mythical creature. Yeah. You know, so. And then, uh, so, so play is good, like the nut action is good, the yeah. string height's good, mm -hmm. but when someone works on it, who's gonna work on it? 
that's the thing. I don't know. Like I, the pot gets dirty or something. What do you mean? If, if some, I don't know, I'd, I'd have to like bring someone to the back and be like, "Hey, man, so." Oh, show the back too, actually, because yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that's pretty neat. It sells the the clear film on the on the guard. If you look closer, you can see the film hasn't been pulled off yet. Not nuts. So I, it's, I assume the guard's never been off. Yeah. But the covers yeah. are but yeah. But yeah. Even um, has it's very gently. Um, I don't know, cause if this thing ever needs work, I can't just be like, oh, here's my guitar, okay, work on it. I gotta like pull some aside and be like, yeah. Okay. One dent in this <laughs> one, I will fucking kill you. I'm not even kidding. You will die if you break this guitar. But uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't really know how it's gonna work out. But uh, hmm. but we'll get there. Cool. But, uh, but yeah, uh, fretboard's really good too. Oh, and wood. Um, these are made green. So uh, they already did all the Heritage Series in Karina, um, but even uh, I've seen supposedly one of these in black. I don't think they did those though. Um, I think I think some of these came in black in '82 and '83. Um, most of the Karina, some are Alpine white and some are black, but they're all um, fully uh, Karina. And I think Maple Neck. Just like a Les Paul on the mahogany board. So if you ever got a good deal on 2011 without that headstock. 2012. Or sorry, 2012. Would you get it? No. You, you just want that one. Yeah. W yeah. With a what? Without the different headstock. But yeah, the, the tw 2012s have that um, the simpler headstock. Yeah. Is it like a V? It's 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 kind of like a Dean. It's kind of like a Dean. Yeah. But just kind of weird. I don't know. It, but it doesn't have all the guides and all that stuff. It's a lot, mm -hmm. a lot less to it. I'm really mad that they put those different headstocks on the 2012s. And I get that was eight years ago, but like, <coughs> what the hell? That was like one of the most intriguing things about this guitar was that so. But that's good to hear that the Gibson bastard builders that you talk to at NAMM confirm that that can't be built again, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so at NAMM, we talked to a few guys. We talked to Mark Agnesi. Uh, we talked to pretty much, yeah. Um, and he said, we asked him about, hey, if, will you guys ever do a Modern again? And he said, no. Um, if you really, really, really wanted to, it would be really expensive. Uh, we could build you this one, but it, it would be honestly cheaper just to buy a vintage yeah. Modern. So Yeah, it's kind of a catch you can you can get one of these for a quarter of the price that you'd have to pay to have a new one made. Yeah. So, so there'll never be more, like Yeah. You know what I mean? Pretty yeah. much yeah. If mm -hmm. how many how that's... many were made? Well around. Uh well, I couldn't it wouldn't be over five hundred. I don't think so. Of that year? Of eighty two or eighty three. I don't think so we should Yeah. Be. Not a lot. Like less than a thousand yeah. by far. Because even the whole like the V and the Explorer Heritage series, they're like a kind of a premium um, limited run sort of thing. So there's there's not like thousands of these. There's not I'd say there's You'd be in a few hundred, eh? Yeah, a few yeah. hundred. Probably. Yeah. So there are not that many of these out there. Yeah. Um that's another reason I wouldn't sell it. Or um, risk uh, getting it on stage or anything or something like that. Because I want to play it a lot and I want to spread it a lot and be like, "Hey, Gibson, do this again because it's fucking awesome." Um, but at, for the time being, just um, like I, I found two of these Alpine white ones online. I found two. Both in Los Angeles. Yeah, and... out of like every store in America, Canada, whatever, I found two of these for sale. Mm -hmm. This is one of them. So, they are not common. No. So, um, get interested in the Modern. It's a really good piece of history. You can, there are like forums of discussion about the Modern and who's seen one and who hasn't and what they might have did with the 58s that might have been made. So yeah, it's just so much lore. But 
I like how the jacks all online with the yeah. buttons. Yeah, jacks. That is cool. I didn't even notice that he was on the front leg car until he got home and I plugged it in. Yeah. Like, yeah, I like that the best. That's I like it the best. I think it's the best place for them. Yeah. Like 335. Uh, MLs. Yeah. 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 SGs. S and, yeah, SGs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so just kind of wanted to share this. Um, hopefully, uh, whoever watches this video, some of you will research and uh, dive deeper into these guitars and um, just get them interested again. Spread the word. Spread the word that these things existed and they're really cool and they're fascinating. I'm not in. So turn down the gain a bit and
Yeah. Hey. Well, fuck, I kept seeing cool, sorry. I'll <laughs> cut it out. Wait, straight. Wait, straight. Which one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. string tuning issue? Um, I don't think so. Honestly, this guitar stays in tune it, really, really well. Oh, okay, yeah. What? I would say the tuner's up there if you want to. Oh, whatever. It stays in tune really well. Like yeah, yeah. Yesterday, I picked it up after not playing it for a week, and then still in tune. Yeah. yeah I barely, I kind of had to tune the B string. What was it? Yeah. Uh, I think it's these string trees. I can see it. Then it gets a straight pole. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I don't know, man. These string trees are. I don't know. This guitar just stays in tune. The tuners are really sensitive too, but they're really fine tuning. 
Oh, uh, the tuning key ratio. Oh, okay. Are they Clusons or something? 15 to 42, I don't know. It says Gibson? What does it say on them? Um, nothing. Just the lines? Yeah. So, I actually don't know if these are stock or not. I would think so. I would imagine so, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought that was a Clusin or a Gibson, but. Yeah. That's the fine lines on them, though. So, hmm. very nice. Good hardware, really good hardware. Strap buttons work. Um, oh, the gold too, hey? Yeah. Gold. Yeah, the gold and black definitely is. Yeah. It's a sick comb. And the white, yellowing white is. Yeah, fit, the fits of, right in. The yeah. green, the yeah. dull whip. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a dull whip, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the dull whip, loading. <laughs> but yeah, so. <laughs> I don't know, I think I'm just most proud of this guitar just because of, like, again, the history, but just how unique it is and just how, you know, under underappreciated it is for uh, Gibson's history. Because, I mean, the choice, if you think it's weird, that's kind of was like a landmark for Gibson to make the, the V and the Explorer. So, I mean, just goes back to like the days when, in the 50s, when anything was the wild west of guitars, when anything went. But yeah. Well, I think I know what, or I think it shows that you like it because you just talked about it for 40 minutes now. Really? <laughs> yeah. 40 minutes? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I fucking love this guitar. Yes. But yeah. Yes. So. Maybe don't buy one, just because they're really expensive, but if you can get one, I recommend it. You know Johnny Be Good or Dire Streets or any of that? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <coughs> turn my gain off. Yeah, so that's good. middle position, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Middle position is 
asking. Yeah. 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 That's the thing about buying vintage guitars because they really are worth the money. I don't know if it's the aging that goes into the pickups, but they just sound so good. Yeah, like, quality. Like yeah. that thing would have been looked over pretty closely at the factory. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. just spat out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the Tim Shaw PS are like so good. Yeah. Oh my god, they sound so good. Like uh, kind of like the pre uh, CVS uh, Fender Strats, how they're kind of hailed as like having a legendary sound. Hmm. It's probably true. <laughs> Yeah, good. Good guitar. Good guitar. <laughs> 